Will the Antichrist rise out of Europe and be of Roman descent, or will he be a Muslim? Could he be a Jew? And will he be killed and raised from the dead? Also, could he possibly be alive today? For answers to these questions and others concerning the Antichrist, stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. I'm delighted to have my colleague Nathan Jones with me, and you know what? I'm going to turn the program over to him. It's all yours, Nathan. Oh, wow, whole program. <laughs> well, thank you, Dave. Uh, folks, Dr. Reagan's latest book is this one. It's The Man of Lawlessness, and it's subtitled The Antichrist in the Tribulation. Now, I'm going to put Dr. Reagan on the hot seat, since I'm given the opportunity, and interview him about this book and ask him his opinion on some very controversial questions. Now, I want to first say, Dave... Thank you for this book. I read it in two sittings. It was oh, just okay. easy to understand, easy to read, and, and I loved it. And I want to know, why did you decide to write a book on the Antichrist? Well, that's a good question because I tell you, Nathan, uh, writing a book about the Antichrist was the last thing I thought I would ever do in my life. I, uh, I just uh, I didn't expect to do that. And I guess the reason I did it was because I saw so many things coming out recently uh, that were about the Antichrist that were so confusing uh, and so unbiblical in nature, particularly people trying to name the Antichrist over and over and things of that nature. And so I thought, well, maybe maybe we just need to get a book out there that covers the fundamentals of what the Bible says about the Antichrist rather than a bunch of wild speculations. And so that's one of the reasons that uh, I decided to uh, do this. Another is, of course, the fact that the Antichrist is a very important person in Bible prophecy uh, uh, in general. This is a fellow who's going to take over the world. The first person ever to rule the entire world is going to be the Antichrist. He's going to fulfill the dream that Hitler had and other uh, tyrants of that nature. He, the Bible says he's going to rule every tongue, tribe, and nation. And it says that during the seven years that he's reigning, he is going to be responsible for killing one half of the population of the world and two-thirds of all the Jews. So it's an important topic in Bible prophecy. I love where your heart is uh, in the preface. You say, our focus of attention should be on Jesus Christ and not the Antichrist. And that is, that is so true. We have so many people obsessed with the Antichrist, and you didn't want to feed that fire, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and over and over you say, we, our focus should be on Jesus Christ and not the Antichrist. Now, I noticed as I read through here that nowhere did you name the Antichrist. Uh, is did you want to do that, or is there a reason to do that? No, 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 no. Uh, the two, I guess two of my greatest pet peeves in the whole field of Bible prophecy is, number one, people who try to set dates for the return of the Lord. Yes. I don't think we can know the date. We can know the season of the Lord's return, but not the date. And secondly, would be those who try to name the Antichrist. Yes. I think the Bible makes it very clear, Nathan, that no one's going to know the Antichrist until he reveals himself. And and uh, I don't think we're going to be around then. I think we're going to be taken out of here before then. But but uh, the people who try to name the Antichrist get into all kinds of wild speculations. And, and in fact, I have a whole chapter in here uh, that is just about naming the Antichrist. Oh, that and, was and it's fun. The, I think it's the funnest chapter. Tell us the craziest one that you <laughs> well, believe. I, I think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I started off with, with a very funny example of what people get into. Uh, uh, my former colleague was Dennis Pollack, uh, whom many of our viewers are very familiar with. He was with the ministry for 11 years back during the 90s. And uh, during that time, we had a daily radio program. And uh, so he came to me one time and said, you know, I'm fed up with all these people trying to, to guess who the Antichrist is. And he said, I'd just like to, to do a radio program about that. I said, well, that's fine. Uh, Dennis, do it. So he gets on the radio and he starts off in a satirical way by saying, I can prove to you who the Antichrist is. He said, I can prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Antichrist is none other than the purple dinosaur, Barney the purple dinosaur, Barney. who was very popular <laughs> among kids at that I time. Love you. And so I yeah. give it all the calculations yeah. in here that show uh -huh. beyond a shadow of a doubt that Borney's name adds up to 666, so he must be the Antichrist. The but what is funny is in the middle of all that, some guy tunes in. He didn't hear the, in, the opening of the program. He tunes in while, while Dennis is, and he thinks Dennis is serious. So he writes <laughs> us this enraged letter saying how 
irresponsible we are that we would be naming uh, Barney the Purple Dinosaur as the Antichrist. But what I do in this chapter is I move from something silly like that to some really serious ones. One of the major candidates is Nero. And I go into detail as to why I don't think there's any possibility that Nero... He's dead. Yeah, uh, well, but... Uh, the Bible, uh, many people believe the Bible indicates that the Antichrist is going to be resurrected from the dead, which I don't believe. Uh, Then there's one uh, new book just came out by a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary of all things naming the Antichrist as Augustus Caesar. And and then uh, uh, one of the silliest I ran across is the Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. That's the name of the book in which the fellow names Prince Charles as the Antichrist. Now that really floored me. I met this fellow in Colorado. He came up to me and said, have you read my book? And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. He said, what do you think? I said, well, brother, brother, let me tell you something. If Prince Charles is the Antichrist, then all I can say is Satan is in big trouble. And he said, why do you say that? I said, he's such a patsy. I mean, he's such a, he said, oh, well, that's all an act. Okay. Said he, he is acting like he's, you know, weak and, 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 but said, boy, when the time comes, it's going to be like a Clark Kent stepping into the phone booth and coming out as Superman. So I discuss his uh, arguments, you know, and why I don't think they hold any uh, water also. So my conclusion is that we should not be involved in war, uh, trying to guess who the Antichrist is. And in fact, I end with a quote from a church father, Arrhenius, written in the year 189 A.D., in which he said, don't spend your time trying to guess who the Antichrist is. It's a waste of time. Right. Church won't be here for you. Well, I hope not. <laughs> I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome back to Christ and Prophecy and my interview of Dr. <laughs> David Reagan concerning his new book about the Antichrist. Now, Dave, do you believe that the Antichrist is alive today? Well, that's a really good question. And uh, many years ago when people would ask me that, I would say, well, not necessarily. But uh, then I've got a whole different view on it now that I express in this view- book. And that is, I believe the Antichrist has always been alive in a certain sense. Yeah, how so? In a certain sense. And that is that Satan knows Bible prophecy and he knows that a day is coming when he is going to empower and I believe even possess the Antichrist. And so I think the problem is he knows about prophecy, but he doesn't know when God is going to trigger it. He doesn't know when God is going to trigger all these end time events. So I think what uh, throughout history he has always had a candidate, always somebody that he is ready to anoint. So in that sense, I think the Antichrist has always been alive and is alive today. I think he has a candidate. I don't think the person knows it. I don't think we know who it is, but he has a candidate. And when God makes his move, Satan will make his move. And it says that he is going to empower this guy. I think he's going to possess him just like he possessed Judas. So yes, I would say he's alive today. Okay. So at, say during World War II, Hitler could have eventually been the Antichrist if given the right circumstances right. or That's Mao. Right. Or, oh, yeah. and it, so Absolutely. today, do you think the guy knows he's the Antichrist? No, I don't think so. Okay. No. It will be happen when the events take that's place. Right. Okay. That's right. Well, that's great. Now, one of the neat f- things, and not because I was in it, <laughs> but uh, you had a prophecy forum where you asked 22 different Bible prophecy experts about different questions. And uh, I let the audience know this was my first time being interviewed by Dr. Reagan on TV. <laughs> I was pretty nervous. But I, I love the question. I love the different points of view. Can you tell us a little about it? Well, yes. That is really the most unique aspect of this book. And, and I'm hoping to write some future books that might have the same uh, characteristic. Section 2 of this book is entitled A Prophecy Forum. And of course, what you know is that about two years ago, we went to the pre-trib conference that's held in Dallas every year of, of oh, people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, there's hundreds of people there. And we always get a room and we set uh, these prophecy experts down and we interview them. Uh, we interviewed about uh, uh, 12 at that time. And we ask them five questions about the Antichrist and put together a series of television programs, which people always love those programs. Oh, it's the because, most popular shows on YouTube. You know, they YouTube. get so many different views from people. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have to understand that although uh, the uh, premillennialists agree on the general picture, the picture that uh, the church is going to be taken out before the tribulation, and there's going to be seven years of horrible uh, 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 wrath of God on this earth, and then Jesus Christ will return. 
they disagree about a lot of the details, and people are not always aware of that. And so, uh, I was trying to show that, particularly with this Antichrist thing. I asked each of these fellows five questions. Who are the some of the people? You well, asked? here's the point. After, not only did we include the twelve that we did in the, in the interviews on television, but I also sent out invitations to ten others. And so, we have a total of twenty two Bible prophecy experts. Wow. We have their pictures and their names in here, including Nathan Jones. Nathan of Lamb Jones, and Lion Ministries. The least known but, of the you know, entire people group. like Mark Hitchcock, who is <laughs> Mark Hitchcock, who is one yeah. of the most prolific writers today on Bible prophecy. Oh, yeah. uh, David Hawking, uh, Dave Hunt, uh, people like uh, Tim LaHaye, uh, and Chuck Missler. It goes on and on. You included a woman too. Oh, that that's right, uh, Carol uh, Matriciana. Good In to fact, see her I wanted Jan Markell, but she wasn't able. She was ill at the time. Yeah. So we get twenty-two Bible prophecy experts. And we start asking them uh, these questions about uh, the Antichrist. And uh, they had a lot of different viewpoints, a lot of different answers. For example, on the very first one, will the Antichrist be a Jew? And then what I do is I write an essay there that summarizes all the different points that these people make. And then I put a chart at the end that indicates what they believe. So that, for example, we had one, two, three, four, five who said he could possibly be a Jew. We had two who said he will be a Jew, and all the rest said no possibility. Mm -hmm. So you see there is difference of an opinion. And we did this on a number of these uh, questions. Uh, we had five in all that we asked them in each one. I give a summary, and then we give specific answers of what they, what they did. And I think this is just an absolutely fascinating part of the book. And, and I think probably the answer that surprised me the most was the one that we received uh, uh, from Tim LaHaye. Of course, he answered all five questions. Yes, you changed his view on something. Well, I, not necessarily me, but uh, he, he wrote back and he said uh, it was had to do with the question of whether or not the Antichrist would be killed and resurrected from the dead. And he wrote back and he said, you know, in the Left Behind series, I took the position, he and his fellow writer, that the Antichrist would be murdered and would be resurrected from the dead and this would cause the whole world to turn to him. He told me in his uh, response that he had never written anything that received so much criticism from fellow Bible prophecy experts. Not from the general public, but uh -huh. from the federal. He said, it caused me to go back to the Scriptures and to really study them uh, on this particular topic. And he said, as a result of studying it, like I'd never studied it before, he said, I came to the conclusion that I was wrong in the Left Behind series and that the Antichrist really is not going to be killed and resurrected from the dead, but it's going to be a great deception mm -hmm. that uh, it will, he will appear to have been killed and resurrected, but it's going to be a deception. That's he, because Satan doesn't have the power to resurrect well, anybody, right? Well, that's true. And, and uh, some of the fellows do believe that he will be killed and resurrected. Mm -hmm. But Tim LaHaye said no, that he had changed his mind. And uh, I would say that most of them, uh, the vast majority of them on that question believe it's going to be a deception of some kind or another. And really yeah. the person who wrote the most eloquently about this was uh, Philip Goodman. You know it, uh, Philip mm -hmm. Goodman. Mm -hmm. He has a ministry in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a Bible prophecy ministry. And he wrote eloquently about this, Always does. about, about the, the significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That the resurrection is what uh, certifies Jesus as the Son of God, as our Messiah, as our Savior. Mm -hmm. And he said, no one is ever going to experience a resurrection like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Even the resurrections that we read about in the Bible are never called resurrections. They're called uh, 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 the, the person came back from the dead. They never really use them because the Hebrew concept of resurrection is truly the idea that you come back in a glorified body. And the people who died in the Bible and were resurrected, re resurrected were really resuscitated because mm -hmm. they did die again. Jesus is the only one who ever died and came back from the dead, and that's not Still going to happen to the Antichrist. That's going to be one of the many deceptions that the Antichrist and his false prophet will pull on the world. But what again, the, the point I was trying to make mm -hmm. in this whole section is that even though those of us who take a plain sense, literal approach to the interpretation of Bible prophecy, we come out with a general overview that we can agree on. But we disagree about many, many points. Uh, will the Antichrist headquarters be in New York? Will it be in Rome? Will it be in Babylon? Uh, things of that nature. Many things that we disagree on. And, and uh, I, 
all of them have good biblical arguments. I mean, yes. it, that's, that's, wh- that's to me what I liked is yeah. that even though 22 of people different, had their different opinions and some of them I didn't agree with, I got to learn what the other opinions are. So when by And they based them on the Bible. Yeah, they're all biblical. So I could sit there and I could know not just one or two views, but I get five or six arguments for the same subject right there. And I might agree, I might not. But again, like you said, they're, they're not primary yeah. doctrine that we need to have a disagreement. That's right. And, and the Bible just always is not real clear about some of these minute points of Bible prophecy mm-hmm. that some people get their Moses all bent out of shape over. But yes. as uh, you know, especially concerning the Antichrist. Right? Well, uh, <laughs> well, you got that right. So that's uh, what that's what I tried to do, and and I think as a result of that, that this particular section of the book is going to be something that people will find very very interesting. I certainly did. Particularly because it contains viewpoints by Nathan Jones. Oh, that'll be the big draw right there. Nathan Jones, buy the book for that. No. Uh, Great book. I really loved it. I really did. And that was, to me, the most special part of the entire book was getting to read all the different people's views. Thank you. Welcome back, folks, to Christ and Prophecy and my interview of Dr. <laughs> David Reagan concerning his new book, The Man of Lawlessness. Now, Dave, uh, Section 2 we were talking about before the break has 22 Bible prophecy experts answering five questions. Now, we already answered, is the Antichrist alive today? And you said, could be. There's always been a man in the wings who mm, could be the Antichrist. Right. But if it's all right with you, let's cover the other four questions. Okay. And I'd like to start, will the Antichrist be a Jew? People are always wondering, what is his origins? Will he be a Jew? Well, uh, there's a, a good biblical reason why for many years, in fact, throughout most of history, people have argued that the Antichrist will be a Jew. And that's based on John 5, verse 43, where Jesus said, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. But if another shall come in his own name, you will receive him. I believe he's speaking there of the Antichrist. Church scholars throughout history have believed that. And so they thought, well, if he's saying that someone else who comes will be received by the Jewish people, then he would have to be a Jew in order to be received by the Jewish people. So that's the basis for the argument that people believe that maybe he will be a Jew. What do you think? What do I think? (laughs) uh, I'll answer the same way I answered in the book here. And and that is, uh, if you go to uh, Revelation chapter 13 and you read about the Antichrist and the false prophet, and it talks about the Antichrist coming out of the sea, yes. which in the Bible, for everything in relation to Israel, the sea was a foreign nation, a foreign, a Gentile Gentiles. country. So, yeah. if the Antichrist is described as coming out of the sea, that means his origins, his ethnicity, is not Jewish. That he would be coming out of most likely Rome. If you go to Daniel nine twenty six and twenty seven, the people who destroyed the temple in Jerusalem in seventy A.D., which was the Romans, he would then be a Roman. So he would probably not be a Jew. I really doubt that he'd be Jew. But some some people did argue that he could be a Jew. Right? Wasn't yes. one. Particular? Well, they did, and uh, but I, uh, the overwhelming uh, answer to that was uh, that he certainly was not going to be a Jew, and uh, that was the the opinion of these uh, particular Bible prophecy experts. The majority, right? Yeah, by a, a overwhelming majority, that he was not going to be a Jew. Now, I, I think you summed up the arguments beautifully there, because uh, again, uh, the Bible uses the sea as a symbol of the Gentiles. And it says the Antichrist is going to come out of the sea. That's a symbol of him coming out of the Gentile nations. Mm-hmm. And, but the, uh, the other one that I think is the most important one was the other one you named from Daniel, where it says that the Antichrist is going to come from the people who destroyed the temple. And that, of course, was the Romans, and they were Gentiles. So I don't think there's any possibility he's going to be a Jew. Uh, I think throughout church history, uh, he has always been identified as a Jew, not only because of these biblical reasons, but also because of uh, vehement, vehement anti-Semitism yeah. and uh, the church trying to make the most uh, terrible character in all of history a Jew. So ethnicity-wise, then, we're pretty much in agreement he's a Gentile. Now, I what about so. his religious background? This is a lot of contention. Will he be a Muslim? <laughs> that's a very lot of contention to get a lot of emails well, about people wanting that. Is a lot really, of, angry people about that topic. Well, uh, this is something that I don't think ever occurred to anybody until recently. Uh, It's, uh, you know, people tend to interpret Bible prophecy out of the newspaper. So, whatever is popular in the newspaper, well, that's it. Well, today the Muslims are on the rise. The Muslims are very aggressive around the world. So, uh, we have people now saying, well, I think the Antichrist is really going to be a Muslim. We have a fellow by the name of Joel Richardson has written a, a book about this, and he is the primary advocate of this viewpoint that he will be a Muslim. And, uh, you know, the first time I heard about that, uh, my immediate reaction was that that's just crazy because uh, the Bible says point blank that the Antichrist will walk into the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, take his seat on the throne there, and declare himself to be God. 
what Muslim no, <laughs> would never, ever never. declare himself to be God? I mean, uh, this is uh, anybody would do that would be immediately killed by the Muslims. I mean, they they would not have anything to do with it. Uh, but th- their theory is no that that the the Muslims are going to increase in power and uh, the Antichrist will will really be a Muslim leader. He will be the Mahdi. They, you know, in, in Muslim theology, uh, they believe that there's going to be this Mahdi who will come, who will be their Messiah. And he says, no, that's going to be the Antichrist, and that he will uh, unite all of the Muslims of the world behind him, and uh, they will be the most powerful force. And uh, they will be the ones who will come against the Jews and all that in the end times. Uh, there are a lot of problems with that. Not only the problem of, of a Muslim ever declare himself to be God, but uh, you know as well as I do, there's two wars that are indicated: the Psalm 83 war and the Psalm, uh, the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. In my opinion, that's going to pretty well wipe out. Uh, the Muslims in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Now, the majority of Muslims are in other parts of the world, but in the Middle East, there's not going to be much left to lead there. Don't, wouldn't you agree? I don't see how that Islam could be a major player in the tribulation. Once Israel subdues its neighbors in Psalm 83, and then once God supernaturally defeats Iran and Turkey and Russia and Libya and all these major players in the Middle East, how could Islam possibly stand? How could a Muslim have faith in Allah anymore when the entire infrastructure of Islam is destroyed? And then the Antichrist, when he comes in to fill out that vacuum, more than likely will annihilate the rest of the Muslims in in India and Bangladesh and other places. In in fact, uh, the indication of the Scriptures is that the Psalm 83 war and the Psalm uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 war were most likely going to take place before the tribulation begins Which or early end. in the tribulation. And there's just not going to be any Muslim power left in the Middle East when that's uh, uh, done with. Uh, there's a lot of problems with it. Well, one problem is that the person who talks the most about the Mahdi is uh, the leader of Iran today. And that's a Shiite nation. The Shiites are at most 20% of the Muslims. Really, probably closer to 10 percent. 90 percent of the Muslims in the world are Sunnis, mm-hmm. and and I cannot believe that some Shiite Mahdi is going because they argue that when he appears, the first thing he's going to do is declare that the Shiite version is the correct version. Of course, and then of all course. the Sunnis yeah. are suddenly going to say, "Oh, great!" and and, and unite oh, behind this guy. Furthermore, that violates the uh, covenant that God gave to Ishmael. In that covenant, God said, "You will always be a people." who will not be able to get along with anyone, including yourselves. Uh, the Sunnis and Shiites are never going to, they hate each other with a passion. They're never going to unite behind some Mahdi or whatever. It's mm-hmm. just the whole theory goes against everything we have here. And, and of course, their number one argument now has become, well, Daniel 9 says that the Antichrist is going to rise out of the people who destroyed uh, the temple. And they argued that most of the Roman soldiers were people from the Middle oh, East. And, all, and, yeah. and so they said, you know, they're, 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 those are people from the Middle East. And so they're going to be kind of rise out of the Middle East. Listen. My argument there is I don't care what they were. I don't care if they were if they were Australian Aborigines. It was the Romans who decided to destroy Rome. It was the Romans who gave the order to destroy Rome. It was Roman generals with Roman troops. I don't know how the Bible could be any clearer. It's not going to be the Muslims. Very good. I agree. Totally 100%. Now, you touched a little bit about another question you asked the panel, and that was, will the Antichrist be killed and resurrected? Do you want to add anything more to that? Well, only to say that, again, those who believe that the Antichrist will be killed and resurrected from the dead have mm-hmm. good biblical basis. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is not something that they just pulled out of the wild blue sky. I mean, think if he died and got resurrected, how, what an influence that would be on the people oh, well, of the sure. tribulation. They'd say, well, he must be a god. Well, the, the biblical basis is in Romans chapter 13, where he talks about seeing that beast rise up, uh, I mean, Revelation 13, where he sees the beast rising up out of the sea. And he speaks about the fact that he has ten, uh, uh, ten horns and seven heads, and he has ten diadems. And it goes on to say that one of those uh, heads appears as if it had been slain as if there was a fatal wound and he had been resurrected or brought back from the dead. Well, first of all, those heads represent, I believe, kingdoms, not uh, the kingdoms of the world, the, the great empires of the world and the secession of those empires. And the fact that one of those that died, every one of them died, but one of them, the Roman Empire, Daniel said, would come back in the end times. So I think this is a reference to the Roman Empire uh, and the Antichrist coming out of the Roman Empire, a resurrected Roman Empire, and not really a reference Union? to him. Uh, okay. Now, we, we're told over in Zechariah he will suffer a wound. Uh, and it says here that the wound will appear as though it's fatal, but it doesn't say it is. So I don't think there is, although there's a basis there for arguing, I don't think that the, it's really teaching that. I think it's going to be a deception. I don't think it's going to be a fatal wound. Exactly. 
What about the Antichrist headquarters? I mean, <laughs> we have people write in saying it's Washington, D.C. Uh, folks believe it's New York City. Some say Rome, like you just said. Uh, others say actual Babylon in Iraq will become the Babylon, because the Bible references yeah, okay. the Antichrist headquarters of Babylon, right? Well, again, it's a great example of how uh, those who, for example, argue there's going to be uh, ancient Babylon rebuilt. Mm-hmm. I, I would say that's probably the majority viewpoint today among premillennials. Uh, only in recent years has that become their majority viewpoint. And that's primarily, again, because of what's happened in the Middle East and the belief that uh, Iraq is going to use its oil to rebuild Babylon and so forth, because Babylon is not rebuilt. All they've done is rebuild some some ancient ruins as a tourist yeah, attraction, a tourist but attraction. it's not a city, you know, that people live in. Uh, so it, it, there is a biblical basis in that in that it, it talks about uh, that Babylon is going to be destroyed in the end times, and that's going to be the headquarters of the Antichrist. So I, I would say yes, there's a good biblical basis, but my my belief is going to be Rome. And I do not believe it's going to be Babylon for a couple of reasons. For one thing, in the book of Revelation, when it starts talking about Babylon in the end times, it says it's mystery Babylon. To me, that's a clear tip off. It's speaking symbolically. John was under the control of the Romans when he wrote that. He could not write in there that no, it was no. going to be Rome. Insurrection, that would be. I mean, he was al- he would probably be murdered. I mean, <laughs> a, a, a killed immediately because he was already a, a, a prisoner. So he had to use a symbol, Mystery Babylon. And, and it is a symbol of Rome. We know this because the Scriptures say so. Uh, Peter, for example, writing from Rome said, I send you greetings from the church in Babylon. There wasn't a church in Babylon. He was in Rome. But he was saying, Rome... We know that in the first century it was used as a code word for Rome. So I think it's talking about that. I do not think it's talking about a revived Babylon. Because for one thing Isaiah says that once Babylon is destroyed by the Medes and the Persians it's never going to be rebuilt again. Exactly. Now, the Antichrist topic can be really depressing, and some people focus on But what I love about all your books is you end with hope. Tell us a little about the hope at the end of the book. Well, we have very little time left, so let me just say very quickly that I do. I have three chapters at the end that are all about hope. They're about the hope that the church has uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ and the rapture, and to talk about the rapture and its meaning, and I talk about the timing of the rapture and why I believe it's going to happen before the tribulation. Amen. So it does end with a lot of hope. Okay. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. Thank you for being with us. This, and I hope the program was a blessing to you. Until next week, the Lord willing, this is Nathan Jones and Dr. Reagan. Thank you for letting me say that. <laughs> saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Where will the Antichrist come from? Will he be a Jew or a Gentile? Dr. David Reagan's book, The Man of Lawlessness, The Antichrist in the Tribulation, answers these and other questions such as, could he be a Muslim? Is he alive today? Will he be killed and resurrected? Where will his headquarters be located? Will he actually control the whole world? Will he be possessed by Satan? And will Christians have to face him? Dr. Reagan discusses these compelling topics and even enlists 22 Bible prophecy experts to give their unique perspectives on them. You will not want to miss this opportunity to survey the career of the Antichrist during the coming tribulation. To get your copy of The Man of Lawlessness, The Antichrist in the Tribulation, Call the number you see on the screen, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, and ask for it by name. Or go to our website at lamblion.com. It is available for a gift of $15 or more, plus shipping. This would make a great gift for your pastor or church library. Christ in Prophecy is made possible through the faithful and generous support of viewers like you. Please consider making a donation to Lamb and Lion Ministries so that we can continue broadcasting the message of Jesus' soon return. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 